Good morning and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 2nd of March 2020 and the time has just gone 11.15 GMT. And the volatility and the, and, um, the tune and the throwing in the financial markets continues. Um, over the weekend, we had some appalling figures, some dreadful figures, uh, manufacturing numbers out of China over the weekend. The official figures uh, showed a sh very sharp decline. The they were actually the manufacturing figures and the manu and the manufacturing figures, <coughs> excuse me, were the lowest on record. They're even below the lows of uh, that were seen in 2008 nature in the financial crisis. The non-manufacturing services they were also in the same boat. Huge decline uh, on the month, well below expectations, but even below the levels. Uh, recorded during uh, the, the depths of the financial crisis. We also have the, the Kaishin survey, the private survey of Chinese manufacturing. That also uh, tumbled, lowest on record, well below expectations, major decline in the previous month. So there were terrible figures out of, out of, out of China on the manufacturing front. Um, and it really just highlights the fact that if you have a effectively kind of a lockdown or major uh, lockdown in certain parts of the country, the overall business community, the overall manufacturing and services community can be severely hit because of the, the ramifications of supply chain issues uh, and disruption caused by those lockdowns. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, that being said, we did see a push higher in stock markets in, in mainland China, in Hong Kong, in Japan, because of the speculation about uh, stimulus, um, some sort of stimulus uh, packages announced from central banks, you know, there's chatter that the Federal Reserve are going to cut rates. There's chatter that the Bank of Japan are going to are going to loosen monetary policy. Same with the Reserve Bank of Australia. So all this sort of speculation that things are getting so bad, central banks must intervene. On that chatter alone, we saw push higher um, in Asian equity markets overnight. And at, at, the, at the beginning of the European session today, things were looking quite rosy. There was a decent rebound underway uh, here in London, France, Germany, and the likes. But um, things have not changed. The the FTSE 100 is holding up into holding up in positive territory just about, but it was fur further into positive territory this morning. The DAX is now in the red, as is the, uh, the the CAC over in France. So, you know, it really says a lot about a market whereby there's a, there's a equity markets off of Friday. Friday's lows were extremely. Uh, were, were, the lows of Friday were extremely low, so stocks were relatively cheap. The the the, the 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 opened higher on Monday morning, on hopes of a, of a stimulus package from various different central banks, but that rally didn't last long. Now, if stocks are relatively cheap and the rally can't last long, what does it tell you about actual sentiment? It shows you how nervous traders actually are when it comes to uh, when it comes to to the uh, to equity markets. Uh, and with that, uh, it really just kind of underlines. The fear that's still out there. Uh, one particular industry I'll show you now uh, was the travel sector. The travel sector uh, was badly hit um, at the back end uh, all last week for fears that there's going to be a major kind of this halt in passengers traveling uh, around um, traveling around Europe. So you can see here that the likes of Wizz Air, Tui Travel, International Consolidated Airlines, Ryanair, EasyJet, Carnival, Lufthansa, Air France, all firmly in the red. Um, so the fact that some of these markets um, endured brutal declines last week, and then they're, they're lower again um, in early early-ish into Monday morning trading, really highlights the fear factor that is doing the rounds uh, when it comes to this uh, this health crisis. What I'm going to do now, as always, is take a quick look at the major uh, events of the week ahead. Then I'll talk about uh, some of the major markets. So looking ahead uh, to tomorrow, we have full year figures from Greg's. We have the Reserve Bank of Australia interest rate decision um, on, on Tuesday as well. Um, there is speculation we could have the Reserve Bank of Australia cutting interest rates. Uh, the Australian economy is closely tied in with what's going on, on in China, which is sadly the epicenter of this health crisis. So keep an eye on the Australian dollar. We have fourth quarter figures out from Target in the US on Tuesday. On Wednesday, uh, we will have the, a raft of the, the final readings of uh, services PMI reports uh, for the major economies around the world, uh, the, Euro uh, the Eurozone, the UK, uh, and, uh, and the US. Uh, on Wednesday, 
we will have the interest rate decision from the Bank of Canada. Same goes for Bank of Canada in, uh, in that, you know, there, you know, it may not be an entire shock if the Bank of Canada go down the interest rate uh, cut route. You know, their uh, their economy uh, is fairly heavily dependent on commodities such as oil. Oil has taken a battering recently. You know, the interest rate in Canada has been held has been on hold for, for quite some time now, which is impressive when you're considering how much their southern neighbour has cut rates by in the last, say, six or, or six or nine months. So keep an eye on that. Uh, fourth quarter figures on Wednesday from Abercrombie and Fitch. On Thursday, we have first half figures from Keir Group here in the UK. We also have full year numbers from ITV, and we also have full year numbers from Domino's Pizza. And on Friday, we have US non-farm payrolls, the all important um, jobs number, job support out of the US. In fact, we're actually hosting a, a live webinar event on the day in question, uh, so please feel free to sign up for that. You can sign up for it here on our website, cmcamarkets.com. Under insights, you'll find the uh, webinars and events link. Uh, you can sign up for it here. It begins at 1315 GMT, so please sign up for that. Um, taking a look at what's going on on the markets, starting off with the FTSE 100, we can see here that it's been obviously a brutal uh, week or six days for the FTSE 100. So the markets, this is all of last week's losses, uh, brutal session that was witnessed uh, on Friday. We can see here that in today's session, we, we managed to push on higher, brief, well, we're still in positive territory, but we managed to head up towards the um, Kind of north of 6,770 mark, but we're kind of back, we're, we're well, well off those highs. Uh, we're currently trading in around 6,607. If you look to take out the lows of last Friday in around 6,456, that could take us back down towards 6,400. And of course, if we break below that, it could have a point us in the direction of 6,300. Now, if we do have a snapback, uh, we could be looking at, at um, running into resistance at the highs of today in around 6,774. 6, 6, and if we go beyond that, you know, we could encounter resistance in around the 6,800 area. Like I said, we're now taking a look at the uh, the DAX over in Germany, and like I said, it, it was trading higher uh, at the beginning of the trading, the European trading session. It's now in the red. So what does it really say to you about sentiment? If uh, stocks, were, the, the market was very low going into the, going beginning the trading session, finishing up last week, and then whatever rally we do have is very much short lived. So we can see here uh, that we're currently trading in around. Just north of 11,800 on the um, on the da on the Dax. If we look to kind of press a lower from here and take out the lows of the day's trading session, uh, if we do press a lower from here, if we take out um, in around six, 11,679. These would be the kind of out of hours hours. If we do press a lower from here, we could be looking at targeting 11,600. Keep in mind we haven't been back at those levels since around August last year. Uh, if you do have a snapback, we could encounter resistance in around 12,000, big psychological number. Uh, and if we go beyond that, we could be looking at towards the kind of the highs of today's session in around 12,218. Let's take a look at what, what's going on with the US market. We can notice here, uh, first of all, on, on the uh, from, from, from Friday's candle on the in terms of the uh, in terms of the Dow Jones. We can see here that there's quite a long wick in the candle, which kind of denotes indecision. Uh, and then there's, there's also kind of like long wicks on today's Monday, today's candle, Monday's candle. But obviously, you know, we're really kind of halfway through that you know, particular block. Um, once again, it denotes indecision. Um, we can see here that index futures were firmly higher. And at one point, they were suggesting that the, uh, the cash market was going to open north of 26,000. We're now expecting uh, the cash market to open in around 25,000. So well off the highs of today's trading session, so it seems that the Dow futures, um, like stock markets in Europe, are, are 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 heading south. If we do press on lower from here, we could be looking heading um, back to, back below uh, twenty five thousand. 
if we manage to kind of go below the lows of Friday in around 24,000, in around uh, 24,680 there, thereabouts, that could point to further, further, further losses. And should that be the case, you know, there really isn't kind of much ground in terms of kind of potential support levels. We could be likely heading back towards uh, the lows of early June in around 24,600, just north of it. And if we go beyond below that, we could be likely heading back down towards uh, the lows of January 2019 in around the kind of rough area, 24,300. Taking a look here at the S&P 500, similar situation to the Dow Jones. We had a long wick on the on Friday's candle. We, we, we have a long wick to the upside on today's candle. So it would suggest denoting decision is, is what, it, what it does. Um, but as you can see here, um, we were po pointing to kind of open, open in around uh, 3,023. We're now expecting the S&P 500 to open around 29,045. So kind of we're well off the highs of, of today's session so far. If we do look to kind of move lower from here, we could be looking at targeting 29,000. And if you go below that, we could be looking at targeting, this is the lows of like last, last Friday in around 28,054. And if you go below that, we could then be looking heading down towards this zone here, levels last seen in early August. And that's in around 2,000, sorry, 2,811 or 12 there, thereabouts. Now, conversely, what we've seen here uh, is a decent move to rebound to the upside in gold. Now, gold had a brutal day um, on Friday. Gold traded had a major, major decline on Friday, and it, it would seem a bit odd. You know, gold is your, it, was, it was deemed to be a low risk asset. It's, it's often a classic uh, asset that is popular uh, in the kind of flight to quality play. So, why did gold lose so much ground on Friday? Uh, and especially in light of the weakness in the U.S. dollar, well, there's been there's, there's been talk that traders uh, to keep up to keep open uh, their long equity positions uh, regarding equity derivatives, uh, equity index futures, uh, possibly incurring margin calls because of the he heavy hefty declines incurred in global stock markets. It's, it's speculated that there's traders were liquidating their long equity positions in gold as a way of freeing up cash. Uh, with that, we did see a fairly sizable move to the downside in gold on Friday. But we've actually managed to kind of shake that off. Notice how nicely the gold market ran down to this blue line here, the 50 moving average, which acted nicely as support and then before um, moving off the lows of it. Um, that comes into play in around 1567. So while we hold above that line there, this 50 day moving average, we could see further gains to be made on the gold market. So if we press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting this zone here in around 1640, 1649, that kind of area. And if we go beyond that, we could then be looking at retesting the highs of early, sorry, late February in around, well, just shy of 1690. Sticking with the uh, commodities theme, let's take a look at Brent Oil market. Brent Oil. Now, there's also talk uh, about OPEC looking to cut production as a way of kind of stemming the decline uh, in the in the, uh, in the in oil prices. Now, obviously, you know, curtailing supply is one way to actually pop up, um, stabilize oil markets. But keep in mind. You know, you can probably be more confident of a rally or a move higher in oil if there's a genuine belief that demand is going to increase. Sure, supply is one way to it kind of taper things off, but it's sort of, in my view, kind of like an artificial way of doing it. You know, you'd be much more confident uh, that the oil market is going to push higher and, and have a sustained rally if you genuinely, if you see evidence that demand for the commodity in question was going to increase rather than. OPEC turning off the taps as they do. But nonetheless, uh, it has worked. The, the oil market has popped higher. We can see here that, that uh, on, on Brain Crude, markets um, in around $50.80 a barrel. If you can essentially maintain above the lows of, of today's session, we could look at heading back up towards the, kind of the 52 region. And then if you go beyond that, we could then look potentially heading towards the, kind of the 56 zone. But Keep in mind, you know, if you if there's a, if if genuine if fears are that bad that demand is really going to dry up, we could see the market turn over on itself again. Despite that all the kind of speculation talk, um, 
that OPEC uh, could look to to cut to curtail demand, curtail supply rather. Should that be the case, if the market does manage to turn over on itself yet again, we could be looking heading back down towards 48 bucks a barrel. That's Brent. I'll take a look at WTI. It's a fairly similar situation on that. Once again, we will rise. The market is um, is off the the highs of the session, but it's still but it's still uh, in in positive territory. Uh, we can see here that the market is 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 has um is is going to firmly off the lows of of today's trading session, and if we can remain off the lows, we could be looking at kind of rebounding up towards the kind of the forty eight zone, and then if we go beyond that, like you know, this kind of psychologically important fifty bucks a barrel would then come into play. Um, but you know, like I said, there's always a possibility that the um the market could turn over on itself, and should that be the case, should we kind of take up the lows of today, and should we uh, turn lower again? We could be looking heading back down towards this zone here, down around 41 spot 74. Now take a look at what's going on with the euro versus the US dollar. Now the US dollar index has had a pretty rough ride the last few sessions. There's been a lot of increased speculation that the Federal Reserve are going to um, are going to look to hike. Sorry hike cut interest rates cut interest rates uh in light of what's going on uh with the, the health crisis so take a look here at your dollar the euro has benefited nicely for the last few sessions it's driving higher we can see the steady increase in positive momentum looking at the MACD indicator the MACD histogram we're pretty much on this red line here the opportunity moving average so if we look to kind of press on higher beyond that metric we could be looking at targeting this zone here, the highs of mid-January in around a one spot 11.72. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking head up towards one spot 12. Uh, on the flip side, if you do have a fairly decent break lower and we head back below the 50 moving average, this blue line here in at one spot 10.26. If you have a decent move below that, it could take us back down towards the one spot 09 region down here. And if you go beyond that, we go below that, we could be looking at retesting the lows of late February. And lastly, I'll take a look at the, the British pound versus the US dollar. Now, it says a lot, doesn't it, that the pound dollar is in the red on a day when the dollar index is, is down considerably. And even still, we can see at Sterling left quite a bit of ground on Friday uh, despite and, and Thursday, um, despite the fact that the US dollar has been losing ground the last few sessions. Um, this comes down to the kind of uncertainty that the UK negotiating team might walk away from negotiations with Brussels in relation to the transition period deal, if they feel that if the if the West if they feel that Brussels will not give them a reasonable deal, they're willing to walk away. It seems to be a negotiating tactic, but nonetheless, it has had a quite a negative impact on the British pound. So if we do press on lower from here, we could be looking at retesting the 200-day moving average, this red line here, and at one spot 26.96. And a move below that could take us down towards 126. Uh, if you manage to have a pop higher in a pound dollar, we could be looking at targeting this blue line here, the 50 moving average. Notice how it acted nicely of resistance in mid February. So, if a metric has been important in the past, it makes it more likely it'll be important in the future, although there are no guarantees. So, we could encounter resistance in at one spot 3017. Now, I do appreciate your time. Thank you for listening to, to, to this video. Uh, please tune in, tune in next week. Have a good trading week and good luck.